Hey guys, over the past two months I've been working with my brother to develop my very first Blender add-on. This add-on is designed to help you create realistic planets in just seconds and is based on an idea I've had for the past two years. The whole concept behind this add-on is that you no longer have to worry about rendering heavy volumetric clouds and atmospheres yourself, but instead they've already been rendered for you. This allows you to fully focus on the fun and creative part, which is designing the planet. Moreover, with this add-on you are no longer restricted by your computer power or your knowledge of Blender. You can simply rely on your creative eye to bring your ideas to life. So how does it work? With the add-on activated, you can go to the sidebar where you will find a new tab called Custom Planet. On the top here, you have to choose the folder with all the pre-rendered elements you've downloaded. Before creating a new planet, let's first add a starfield background with this button here. You can probably not see much through the YouTube compression, but there is a starfield in the background. Let's press new and add a new planet and scale it up a bit. If you want, you can move the planet wherever you want with these two sliders. The planet depth here becomes important once you have multiple planets on top of each other. Let's go to the next panel where you can do some overall settings like resetting the material or choosing the resolution of the pre-rendered elements. You can also adjust the overall planet emission strength. The last option here is for controlling how dark the shadow should be. So by turning this up, you can see some details on the dark side of the planet. Before going to the surface panel, let's go to the light setup panel instead. Here you can choose the overall angle the sun is coming from. Currently you have four main angles, but I will add some more in the future. Let's go back to the surface panel, which probably has the most impact on how your planet looks in the end. On the top here you can choose between a bunch of surface types. Once chosen you can then modify the rotation, hue, saturation, brightness and contrast. You can also tint the surface by picking a color here. This works on top of these other settings so changes on for example the saturation will get you a different result. For getting a realistic surface easy and fast these are the main settings, but if you want to have much more control on how the surface looks, you can enable use color ramp. The planet now turned black and white and you will get this color ramp here. You will also get this white point slider in the top, which is important for how this color ramp works. The color ramp goes from 0 to 1, so from black to white. If your surface just has values spanning from 0 to 0.3, you can just affect the planet with sliders in the lower part of the color ramp. One way of finding a good value for the white point is to add a new marker on the color ramp, slide it way up and give it a color. We now want to decrease the white point until we see some white spots appearing, which means we are using the whole range of the color ramp. We can now move and add different colors to this color ramp to get a huge variety of different results. This process is definitely not as easy as just tinting the planet in one color and it is easy to overdo it and get some unrealistic results. But after some time you will definitely see that this gives you much more control over how the surface looks. One thing I like to do is adding a black marker between two close markers. This will create a black line between different colors and give it an interesting look. Below the color ramp you can see the same four settings we have on the top. These will give you some more controls once you are happy with the color ramp. The sliders on the top won't work as expected anymore, but instead affect the value that goes into the color ramp. Of course you can still change the surface type, you just then also have to adjust the white point accordingly. As you can see, by just changing the white point you can get totally different looks.
Let's now go to the water palette. Here you quickly can add rivers and oceans. I'm not totally happy with all these presets yet, but that is something I will add to over time. The emission tab is very similar. Here you can add all types of emission, like for example rivers of lava. With this shadow visibility slider you can remove the emission on the bright side of the planet. You of course can again change the hue and saturation. Besides lava rivers, you can also add city lights. This here for example is from Earth and goes perfectly with one of these Earth surfaces. But you can also have some more sci-fi city lights. In the clouds panel you can tweak the cloud layer. You can pick between different densities ranging from just a few small clouds up to a thick layer of clouds. You can also adjust the thickness of each layer more with this thickness slider. This brightness slider here actually does not go brighter but instead you can darken the clouds by decreasing it. Next up is atmosphere. Here you can choose between three different types which basically determines how big the spread into outer space is. The last one is actually more meant for gas giants where you sometimes have this blue rim at the edge. You of course again can adjust the saturation or how much the atmosphere is visible at the center. You can also adjust the color, you then probably have to go back to the surface panel and adjust the saturation for it to look realistic. As a last option, you have this white rim slider, which adds this white glowing rim to the atmosphere you oftentimes see in movies. Let's now talk about the advantages and disadvantages with creating planets like this. The advantages are pretty obvious. It is super fast and easy to create planets. You don't have to know the technical stuff behind creating good looking clouds and atmosphere. Instead, the process of creating a cool planet is much more artistic and fun. Also, since these are all pre-rendered elements, you don't have to render taxing, volumetric or subsurface scattering materials. Instead, they render super fast and look exactly the same in Eevee and Cycles. But of course, there are some limitations with this method. For it to display changes in real time, it uses pre-rendered elements which are composited together with a material on a plane. So you can't do complex animations where you rotate around the planet since it's just a 2D card meant for the background. Also, since these are pre-rendered elements, you can't just light it exactly the way you want. Instead, there are some predefined sun angles to choose from. And of course, you can't just zoom into the planet forever, but you are limited by the resolution of the pre-rendered elements. Some of these limitations I'm planning on fixing in the future with new features, like adding planets where you're much closer in the atmosphere. I'm also planning on adding planet rings and asteroid fields. Also, once the add-on is published, you can help me improve it by giving me feature requests. These can span from just new surface types that are missing or whole new feature sets I haven't thought about before. If you are wondering if this add-on is for you, I will be releasing a free version which comes with some limited presets. This gives you the chance to try out the add-on and see if this works for you and the kind of project you need it for. So when is this add-on being released? Well, the original plan was to have it released a few days ago. 
but unfortunately I've run into some problems which first need to be fixed. So I can't say exactly when, but I'm hoping in maybe two weeks, but no guarantees here. If you want to know exactly when, subscribe to the channel and I will definitely announce it here first.